little bit about HDR without, well, having to do the HDR. And there are a couple of neat tricks we can teach. Once your panorama is stitched, and as you can see from this cabin shot, I have the silver mirror ball nadir already done in Adobe Photoshop Actions. I'm going to move to the Vibrance selection here in Photoshop. And I'm going to punch the Vibrance up a little bit because I want to bring in some more color. And I want to saturate it a little bit more too. Now don't get too crazy, but I want to see some more wood. This is looking too flat for me. So I don't want to get too crazy here in the color. But I do want to bring in some more reds and then some more yellows. But we're also going to do one more step here in a moment. Once you kind of like the color, saturation, and Vibrance, punch the OK button. Zoom in a little bit more. Two more things I want to do basically for this photo are over here on the right, which is the cabin. It's a little too dark in the midtones and a little too dark in the uh, shadow area. And we have a little bit of the same thing to address over here on the grass as well. So what I'd like to do is to go ahead and bring in another Photoshop filter called Shadow Highlights. It's been built in since CS4, I believe, and it's a very powerful filter because just with one stroke, look, ta-da, not bad. Now, another important thing is make sure your white point on your Mac or PC is set to 5,000 degrees Kelvin or the alternate daylight standard, 5,500 degrees Kelvin. Because notice over here on the right, before, after, before, after. If you're working with a natural calibrated white light environment, these are going to look very good on your Mac or PC as well. Let's do one more. This is the same cabin, but indoors. Now, over here on the left, I'm going to highlight this area. That hallway is a little bit too dark. Now, over here on the right, I actually underexposed this panorama by one full stop, so the windows here on the right look pretty good. Once again, we go back to shadow highlights, and I'm going to punch it up a little bit more. But again, don't get too crazy here. You start getting to about 65, 60%, and you start bringing in some posterization and artifacts here in the background, which doesn't look too good either. So watch how crazy you go on shadow highlights. We're pretty much finished here, so I want to go ahead and export this now. So we're going to go over to File, Save for Web and Devices. Now Photoshop says, hey, this thing's too big for the web. <laughs> no duh. So we're going to go ahead and pick the Yes box anyway because we're smart, we're intelligent, we know what we're doing. So you're going to click the Yes box here and simply ignore the Adobe Photoshop warning. We're not going to be uploading a 54 megabyte JPEG to the web. I also don't want you uploading 54 megabyte files to your VPix Tour Manager either. So basically we're going to choose a medium compression. You still want to make sure this is 6000 by 3000. And you want to make sure your file size is between 900K and about 1.3, 1.4 meg.